Hello there, my fellow Battle Brothers, and welcome to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. Today we are gonna finish our journey alongside the Mantis Warriors, in this third and final video from their coverage. You know, for a chapter that I mentioned extensively during my Badab War videos, I never actually expected to be able to make three whole videos just about them. Either way, there were a couple of other interesting campaigns of theirs I wanted to mention, as well as say a few words about a couple of noteworthy members. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? And we will debut this video with The Hunt for Carfra the Antipath. This was a military campaign conducted by the Imperium in 330 M39 to hunt down the treacherous Cardinal Carfra and his coven of Chaos Cultists. After the failed assassination attempt on the life of the Ecclesiarch Niber Vasily revealed the corruption of Cardinal Carfra, the false priest and his coven of Chaos Cultists fled from Imperial justice, sowing nothing but destruction across the Segmentum Solar in their wake. Declared traitorous extremists from every pulpit the word of the Holy Adeptus Ministorum could reach, the Imperium-wide hunt for the Antipath and his followers was to last decades. But it would be the Mantis Warrior Space Marine chapter that would eventually find the damned Carfra. Intelligence ripped from the souls of renegade corsairs by the chapter librarians gave the first hints that this arch-enemy of humanity had found refuge among the chaos-worshipping renegades of the Golgothan Wastes. This discovery sparked a five-year manhunt by the chapter that eventually led to the discovery of a secret stronghold in the pre-imperial ruins on the death world of Parasus. Infiltrating the noisome fungal rainforests which surrounded the stronghold, the Mantis warriors attacked without warning, taking on a force of mutants and heretics five times their number in a deadly night assault. In just a couple of hours though, the stronghold was taken. Though it was littered by the bodies of the defenders, the Mantis warriors did locate their quarry. Carfra, now a rolling mass of blighted flesh twisted by the powers of the Dark Gods, was scorched from his refuge in the reeking sewers below the fortress. The prisoner was taken in chains by the Mantis warriors to the Inquisition watchhold on Valsingam for final examination and judgment, garnering the chapter high accolades from the Ecclesiarchy. The Scourge of the Slave Lords In the centuries before the High Lords of Terra ordered the creation of the Maelstrom Warders Alliance to defend that region of space, Attacks from the Chaos Renegades and the Xenos of the Maelstrom Zone reached their highest level in 2000 years. Faced with such overwhelming numbers, the Mantis warriors were forced to fight with both creative tactics and great intelligence, luring the enemy into ambushes when they could and always fighting when they possessed the advantage. While this worked with great acuity against the Orcs and the Chaos Raiders, the Dark Eldar pirates known to the worlds they raided as the Slave Lords were another matter entirely. Vicious and sadistic beyond the imagination of men, the Dark Eldar were beings of shadow and mist, far too mobile and elusive to be easily trapped even by the Mantis warriors' penchant for guile. The Dark Eldar loved to prey on undefended worlds, carrying off thousands of weeping, frightened people to a fate far worse than death in their dark city of Komora. The favored prey of the Slave Lords were undefended Imperial merchant convoys and isolated planetary outposts. After the death of 60 Mantis Warriors brothers during a failed attempt to defend the Shrine City from the Dark Eldar, the chapter decided to devote all resources to the destruction of these Slave Lords. With the aid of their librarians, famous for their skills in intrigue and misdirection, the Mantis Warriors hatched a costly plan to defeat the Slave Lords. They let word go out into the region that they would be defending the Desert World of Tranquility too, with all the resources at their disposal. That they posted extra chapter vessels in the system and gathered most of the world's small population of about 1 million into a single encampment defended by two Space Marine units. One visible and the other concealed beneath the world's desert sands. When news reached the Mantis warriors of Dark Eldar diversionary attacks upon the void mining colony of Sigard, 
the chapter ordered its fleet to leave the Tranquility System for Sigard, leaving the world seemingly undefended. When the Dark Eldar predictably attacked Tranquility, believing that the Mantis warriors were away, the Space Marines made the hard choice of waiting until the Dark Eldar were fully committed, killing or capturing hundreds of innocents before the Mantis warriors sprung their trap. The hidden Space Marines rose from the desert sands to confront the enemy. At the same time, two Cobra-class destroyers of the chapter fleet, buried months before, shook off their blankets of sand and fired their torpedoes at point-blank range into the Dark Eldar ships and skimmers. The torpedoes' fusion warheads damaged heavily the Slave Lord's lightly armored vessels, which immediately fled the world, leaving their comrades on the ground to fend for themselves. But the Mantis Warrior's main fleet returned from warp space as the Dark Eldar vessels reached the outer system, having never left for Sigurd, and they destroyed what remained of the Slave Lord's ships, forever ending the threat of this cabal to the people of the Endymion Cluster. Some notable characters of this chapter include Chapter Master Yarvan Sartak This guy is a former Chapter Master of the Mantis Warriors who was slain in 906 M41 at the opening stages of the Badab War. While both Loyalist and Secessionist forces were under a flag of truce on the world of grief, the deceitful Luft Huron and his renegade Astral Claws launched a surprise attack against the Red Scorpions, and both Chapter Masters Ortis and Sartak were slain during the melee. Chapter Master Khoisan Neotera Another former master of the Mantis Warriors during the Badab War, who replaced Yarvan Sartak until almost at the end of the conflict. He was permanently imprisoned by the Inquisition for his role in the Chapter Rebellion in the Imperial Prison Penitent Yakon, in isolation for the rest of his life. During the trial, he stood motionless for seven days and only spoke four words, I seek no mercy. Shaidan Shaidan is a librarian of the Mantis Warriors Second Company and member of Captain Aupin's command squad. He carries an unusual double-bladed force staff which has a bayonet-style blade, called a mantis staff. This force staff was said to have been forged in the long-forgotten fires of Badab Prime. It was during the final stage of the fall of Badab that Shaidan, assigned as a liaison with a detachment of astral claws on one of Badab's moons, saw that they had removed the Aquila from their power armor signaling that they were no longer fighting for the greater good of the Imperium, as Luft Huron had once claimed. Shaidan then communicated this heresy to Captain Matras, who ordered his own ship's guns to turn onto the Astral Claw's fleet, signaling the change of loyalties to Chapter Master Khoisan Neotera. On Herodian IV, Shaidan saved the Death Watch kill team from a Tyranid ambush, by jumping out of a Mantis Warrior Thunderhawk during their retreat and assisting in the Death Watch extraction. His chapter had been dismissed from battle as not required, but he just couldn't stand and watch his fellow Marines die. Later, he commented that in the last century, not one member of the Mantis Warriors had joined the Death Watch. He suspected that this was due to the chapter's heretical history, and the Inquisition just didn't trust them enough. After Quirion Octavius of the Imperial Fists saw Shaidan in action though, he requested that he and two other Mantis warriors, Assault Sergeant Sauron and Devastator Marine Ruinous, replace the lost members of his own kill team. However, they would be only seconded to the kill team, and they were not fully inducted into the Death Watch. Azara Redv Azara Red was born into the deep desert tribes of Tranquility Free, also known as Bittergeier to its indigenous people, as his psyker gifts were surfacing early. When he was still a child, his family undertook the dangerous pilgrimage across the Urg Sands to the Valley of the Nine Winds to present him to the Mantis Warriors for judgment. Although too young at the time to begin the transformation into an Astartes warrior, nevertheless the chapter librarians sensed a great future for the boy, and began to school him in the control of the mystic arts. From the day he was brought forth, he showed a mighty potential seen maybe only once in a hundred generations. As time went by, Red grew into a skilled neophyte, who fought as a space marine scout in a score of campaigns 
where his burgeoning gifts of prognostication allowed him to advise and improve upon the plans of veteran space marines many times his age. His powers grew exponentially after joining the Mantis Warriors Librarium and learning the deeper mysteries of the chapter. He quickly gained a reputation not only as a master of ambush and an expert field tactician, but also as a master of prophecy and divination. Azara Red would go on to become the chief librarian of the Mantis Warriors and serve as both a powerful battle psyker and a wise strategist. Known both to the chapter and to the people of the Endymion Cluster as the Dust Prophet for his abilities and writings. When the Badab War began to go against this chapter, it was his leadership that managed to outwit loyalist commanders for so long and preserve his brothers in the face of the storm. Towards the end of the Badab conflict, he stepped forward, taking the reins of leadership and effectively becoming master of the Mantis Warriors until the end of the war. He further distanced the chapter from the machinations of the Tyrant of Badab, but true to their word, both he and the Mantis Warriors remained the fighting part of the secessionist cause until almost at the bitter end. It was a testament both to his skill as a commander and the strength of his divination powers that even isolated, outnumbered and facing the onslaught of the Karkaradans chapter, he and the dwindling forces managed to avoid extermination. The fate of Azara Red remains unknown, and although it is said that he perished in the last days of fighting on Tranquility 2, his body was never found. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Mantis Warriors, their campaigns, and a couple of heroes for today. So, like I always ask you at the end of my videos, are you a fan of the Mantis Warriors? What do you like or dislike most about them? If you have any thoughts or questions on them or today's topic, you are always welcome to write them down in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. If you want to stay a bit more up to date, click the bell notification icon. And if you want to help the channel, you can visit my Patreon page the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you a peaceful day. The Emperor protects.